things have been kind of hit or miss for them. And I get the sense that that's what's going to happen in this two-game series as well. Right. Queen of Pain is going to be uh, picked up here for Team Fnatic. We have uh, Team Secret waiting on their 1-2 picks. But Fnatic here, we've got both uh, Dazzle. I, I'm kind of interested about the Dazzle and SF bands because I feel like SF does warrant, definitely warrant a band. But what about the, um, the Dazzle? It, it seems a little odd. I think Dazzle, Keeper of the Light, heroes like that in general are just really annoying to play against. Right. Especially when a team like Secret plays it. Like, Secret, the way they play, I feel like, is they just out-map control you, out-team fight you mm -hmm. with the early game. And I think Dazzle, I think we saw it so much yesterday, is just a fantastic support at that. I think the SF fan goes hand-in-hand -hand with picking up the Queen of Pain. Right. Uh, everybody knows that Secret, it's no... Um, it's pretty much well known that Secret like to pick the Queen of Pain with the Shadow Fiend, just for Five that insane team remaining. fight, the mobility, the late game power and presence that it provides. Right. And so I think the Queen of Pain pick is a block pick, Reserved. and I think the Shadow Fiend pick is similar to that, because when you think of Shadow Fiend, of the current pool of players, who do you think of in this game? You're going to think of Mushi, right? Yeah. And so absolutely. I think that's kind of what it lends itself to. Nox Siren is the first pickup for Team Secret, followed up by now a Gyrocopter. Toby and I were talking about this when we were having breakfast. Uh, he was he was asking me, you know, how much Naga Siren are we going to be seeing in these group stages? And we both kind of thought we're going to be seeing a lot of Naga Siren up, particularly the four position Naga Siren. Uh, we may see a core Naga rise up once in a while, but I feel like the four position Naga Siren is incredibly strong. The utility of the ultimate is insane. Uh, the tankiness that she brings to the support role is uh, a little bit unique. Unique, and we saw, especially Team Secret, wreck with it at the ESL1 Frankfurt. Ten seconds yeah, I think remaining. that the hero is just incredibly safe to play with. Uh, you don't want to play Five against it remaining. if it's a carry, because it's one of those heroes that can just single-handedly win. And so I think a hero like Naga is just a safe pick early on. Time. It doesn't show you too much of your hand, because you can run it in a lot of different roles, but obviously with the gyrocopter picked up, it's really like unlikely right. that it'll be a one position, especially with the way that gyro farms. Like, you don't want to split Naga's farm with a gyrocopter mm -hmm. because you're going to naturally push out all the lanes. So it's probably not going to be a mid Naga, although it can be because it is Radiant side, but I would be surprised. Tusk is the second pickup for Team Fnatic. Of course, Tusk has been seeing a lot of play, four position, off lane. Either way, he's versatile enough in his role that I would say he's a very valuable um, early pickup. It doesn't set your draft um, in one way or another. Our second set of bands coming out, the Keeper of the Light, uh, a notable pickup from Team Secret, uh, especially run with the Naga Siren. A lot of spam coming out, um, a lot of defensive capabilities, and now the Bloodseeker, who has been known to be a very strong combo hero in the current meta. Uh, I really feel like Bloodseeker is going to come to the foray in this tournament. I feel like he's going to be one of those heroes that uh, a couple teams are going to pick up in that 3-4 position and just dominate with, um, simply because he's maybe not necessarily overpowered, but he does have a br he does bring a very unique skill set that no other hero can really match. Yeah, we actually didn't see the hero at all yesterday, if I nope. remember correctly. It wasn't even banned game, by any of the teams, if I remember. Mm -hmm. um, I think Bloodseeker is a really good hero, but I think people overrate him in a sense. Yep. Uh... I don't think that he's... Uh, he's not like Leshrac to me, where you pick Leshrac and you can pretty much develop a lineup around him, but uh, I think the concept of that, what you just talked about, like having, you know, popular heroes come to the forefront, especially in this metagame, I think it's really... The concept of, like, those, you know, those hidden picks or stuff that you don't want to show, yeah. I guess is kind of pointless. I don't think any team will have more than, like, one or two pocket strategies. Like, if you remember TI3, TI4... Mm -hmm you pretty much saw what teams were going to pick. Like, there was yep. no real pocket picks or anything like that. It's more just pocket strats, like the way that you play Five the lineup remaining. that matters more right. than what you're actually going to pick. Because nobody's just going to be like, I'm going to first pick Darkseer and then run him as a mid or something like that. Like that yeah, stuff like that doesn't happen. Yeah, I can see what you're saying here. Viper now being picked up for Team Secret gives them uh, a good amount of early game power, both the Gyrocopter and Viper as cores are able to do a good amount of damage there in the early to mid game. Uh, and the Viper obviously very notable for his tankiness. Um, he's going to be quite a strong matchup versus the Queen of Pain. In a one versus one scenario, the, the Viper does quite well because you basically eliminate Shadow Strike from the Queen of Pain's repertoire. Like usually when it's the one versus one, right, you avoid Shadow Strike in the laning phase part and go for maybe like uh, 
zero two three build, or maybe you just go one one three, but don't really use the Shatter Strike because that Viper, of course, has his corrosive skin, and you don't want to be actually dealing more damage to yourself than you're dealing to the Viper. Yeah, I think you still go with the one level of dagger just for the ganks, right? And the counter ganks, but you uh, just don't use. Yeah, it you just don't use right? it against the viper. Mm -hmm. But I'm curious to see if that's a mid viper because I know Artizi doesn't like playing it. Even back in like the EG days, he would complain about having to play because yeah. it's just it's not his type of hero. You can't snowball with it. <laughs> but can't. to be fair, what mid player likes playing viper? You yeah, know? but it's gonna be S4, so it's yeah pretty irrelevant, I guess. But nobody, yeah, nobody really likes to play viper mid. But it's just such a game winning hero. Mm -hmm. Like I think I called it before this tournament. I was, you did. I, we had a conversation. Like, viper and Razor. Like, Viper's going to be a pick, like, all the time. If you yeah. take a Viper, you'll get Razor. Viper, I think, has, like, an 80% win rate so far in these in the wild card. Remaining. And I think oh, teams wow. are just seeing the strength of the hero again. Like, it's been pretty stable, Five right? Mm -hmm. It's just annoying to play against. If you decide to put it in a one-on-one -on -one position, it beats almost everything. Like, we saw that in, I think it was almost all of MVP Phoenix's games. Like, they would very often just put the Viper one-on-one -on -one against the offlaner, and then you yeah. can go aggressive tri-lane or do dual lanes. It just opens up your map a lot. Yeah, he's just such a strong one-versus-one hero that it gives you that opportunity to not only potentially win the mid matchup, but as you said, switch things up, maybe run something aggressive, and then leave the Viper safe lane, which is then even worse than the one-versus-one yeah. mid, because then the Viper has all that extra room to, to utilize his his movement speed advantage, basically, right? Like, he's, he's very damage over time focused. He, he slows you down so being able to have a longer lane to be able to chase you means the viper is just that much more powerful in a one versus one but i do like what fanatic get against the viper here um so they grab the visage but it's the wind ranger who is pretty important to me i feel like wind ranger um is quite strong versus viper the focused fi the focus fire is a really good way to output a lot of single target uh physical damage against the viper and of course the wind run dodging a large share of damage as well um i feel like the wind ranger is one of the few heroes that can actually um um, maybe win that one versus one against Viper, though I th I still think it's one sided to Viper. I still think it's like more like a sixty forty. Yeah, it might even be more than that. <laughs> yeah. I remember like I played in I played in some like in house league recently. Late recently, maybe it was FPL, and I had to play that matchup. Mm -hmm. It was like Wind Ranger versus Viper. You would think that the Wind Run helps a lot, but if you really think about it, like Wind Ranger has one or two armor. Starting in, her base damage actually isn't that fantastic. Right. And every time you load a power shot, the Viper wants to get hit by it. Because it's just not yeah. efficient for you to use mana on Wind Run because it costs so much. Mm -hmm. Like all of your spells cost roughly 100 mana. Mm -hmm. You have like a 350 mana pool. Like you want to be using those on power shots, right? Yeah. It's really rare that in the mid matchup that you, you're going to get an opportunity to shackle to set up for a kill. Mm -hmm. um, I am curious to see how they run this Wind Ranger pick, though. I'm pretty sure they're going to put the co op mid and aggro yeah. with like Visage, Wind Ranger, plus like. I don't know. I would do something like Earthshaker, but something more even interesting than that is the fact that Pudge was banned as the last <laughs> ban. Maybe yeah. It's like one of two things, right? It's like Secret either uses it as like a it's like a last pick to throw things off for like an off lane Pudge or something like that, or Mushi was just like I don't really care what I ban because he's known to do that. Remaining. Yeah, that's true. Um. What do you think about the Crystal Mate? Because this is the support that has been out of the meta for a while, and then this recent patch, an upgrade to her ultimate, an upgrade to Frostbite, um, has made her a lot more viable. And then actually the, the last buff as well was Crystal Nova slowing down attack speed, which I think I've, I've talked to you about this before. Um, you said you were talking to one of the pro players, and, and like the... This attack speed slow is quite significant because it means in those sort of like one versus one where you're zoning out the offlaner or something like that, like that just means you win the right click battle as well, right? Yeah, I think AUI pointed that out too when we did our patch analysis video. He said mm -hmm. the attack speed slow is pretty significant, but I think it goes beyond that. I think the Crystal Maiden early game just ruins the Queen of Pain. Like you can, it's one of the better heroes to gank with because if Frostbite goes off, then it's almost a guaranteed kill. Yep. So what I would like to see out of Secret's lineup is they just play aggressively. Like the Crystal Maiden, I think, can even start in the jungle, grab a smoke, grab boots, and then just at level two or three, when you've got pretty much a level of everything, you just go around the map killing. And I think that the Crystal Maiden pick is also being in response to Fnatic potentially aggressive tri-laning. Because that's what I would do if I was Fnatic here, I think. I think I would pick, like, Visage, Wind Ranger, plus Earthshaker. That right. was the old LGD combo that they picked almost every single game that was so successful for them. 
Darks here being the last pick up for Team Secret. Um, pretty good combination with um, the Gyrocopter being able to vacuum together for the call down. And then you actually have the Naga Siren Sleep to set it all up beforehand. So you get a good sleep. A couple of heroes are grouped up. You lay down the wall preemptively. You also have the Crystal Nova that's going to be on top of all that. So, or, or rather the Freezing Field as well. So I, I like the combination and it does give them an amazing amount of sustain because Darks here. There's also that can afford to go for the mech, and that would then leave our Viper to go for maybe a little bit more stats-focused build and early agonims, and uh, I, I feel it just as a whole that this is so much team fight, and Fnatic are known to be a rather aggressive team and want to be able to fight you, and the lineup that they picked up is more damage-focused. It feels like Team Secret are just going to be able to live through that damage. They have enough sustain that they're just going to outlast you and then their damage over time starts kicking in whether it's the ion shell the viper of course very damaged over time oriented uh, even certain people like the gyrocopter early on with his flat cannon so um this is I, I i like what team secret have done with their lineup it feels like fanatic are um a lot more focused on performance in the early game i actually really like um i actually really like that witch doctor pick because if you look at secrets lineup they actually don't have a whole lot of disables to stop it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if there's like one support ultimate that really ruins your life, it's the Witch Doctor <laughs> ultimate. That yeah. can turn it by itself. All right, starting things off here, Team Secret. We've got, uh, well, let's just cover who's playing what first before we actually have a stab at what the lanes are. We got Puppy, who's going to be playing the Crystal Main Zai on the Dark Seer uh, S4, going to be playing the Viper Kuro on the Naga Siren, and that leaves Arteezy on the Gyrocopter. I think that that's pretty standard. That's what I think that's what we discussed earlier, right? Mm -hmm. Because you can't really put the Gyrocopter mid, but back. he's just going to go for the Ring of Aquila, sustain the lane, and I think the better thing for Secret to do here is just run the Crystal Maiden around. So in which case then we, like, you just leave the Viper there, you move the Crystal Maiden around. So what do Fnatic need to do to actually uh, put pressure on Team Secret? Because I kind of feel like they, they, have to, they have to set the tempo in the first 15 minutes. Yeah, I think it's not even the lineup thing. I actually really like Fnatic's lineup, but I feel it's more just the fact that you're... If you're a fanatic, you know you're the underdog coming into this game. Yeah. So I feel like against a team like Secret, especially the way to beat them, is to set your own pace early and wait for them to get frustrated and overextend. Because uh, I, I feel like EG is a little bit more disciplined in nature. Mm -hmm. In that regard, I feel like EG is the team that will always have the comeback advantage. But I feel like Secret is the team that really relies on having just like a dominant lead. All right, and as we get things going here, let's talk about Fnatic. We got Mushi playing the Wind Ranger mid up against S4's Viper. We'll see how that matchup goes. Uh, the top lane, we do have a defensive tri lane. Ketchik Imba is playing the Visage Johnny on the Witch Doctor. KYXY playing that Queen of Pain. And that just leaves Ohio as our off lane Tusk, who is currently being zoned out quite heavily by Kuro. I did like this early counter ward that I placed out. Uh, this blocks out the camp is, and actually happened to spot out a early lane ward um, that's secret put out so that actually is quite fortuitous for him but is he actually going to be able to come forward in lane enough because it is a, a bit dangerous like curl can win the one versus one matchup and then if he sticks around a bit too long and rtz gets in range he's gonna get uh, rocket barrage down yeah this is the old um alliance strat too you just get a support naga and then give her a poor man shield and because of her natural move speed like if you just click on her hero her stats are unbelievable early game as a support. She's got six armor, yeah. 320 move speed. Then you've got the block from the poor man shield. So even mm -hmm. if you get tanked by the creep wave, it doesn't matter. And, and he's got or arcane aura as well. Yeah. So he's able to spam out uh, a riptides more often. Top lane looks like Zai's going to be taking some damage. Not level two just yet. So the double slows are actually doing a good amount of work. Zai, I think, will survive. Uh, he's actually dropping very low here and a couple more right clicks and they would have got him. But uh, he is going to be forced into the potion. He still had Shadow Strike on him. So that's a big loss for Zai, which uh, he means he will be forced back to base. Meanwhile, in the middle lane, uh, we've got uh, an even. Even CS uh, lead here for Mushi. He's just one deny up over S4. Of course, feeling a lot of pressure from Johnny. This is sort of a signature thing for Fnatic, though, right? Yeah, they actually... I think somebody else pointed it out, too, 
in when we were doing breakfast mm -hmm. that this is how they like to play. They like to set up Mushi as much as they possibly can for future success. And so this isn't too surprising. But the thing is, it's a Viper and a Windranger. And it's a lot less scary when you're a Viper, right, against a Windranger because you just know that her kill potential is so low. And something I want to point out that's actually really interesting, and I was so glad to see this, is if you notice Mushi's skill build, like, this is really different. He's opted to go for two into Windrun this early on and actually only a single level of Shackle Shot. Yeah, I really like this as well because uh, I feel like, it, it, you, as you were talking about it, like, I didn't actually think about the low armor on the Wind Ranger, and that makes a lot of sense. But when I view the Wind Ranger a Viper matchup, I look at it as entirely right click oriented for the Wind Ranger and more focused on CS than anything else. So I like this stats build from Mushi, and I, I think you brought up a really good point, which was if you're playing this, you do not really want to be spamming out power shots. So uh, the more right click focused you are, both when it comes to harassing S4, but also playing for CS, I, I think it's just a better way to play this one versus one. Yeah. I mean, I talked about that before, how you don't want to spam power shot, but mm -hmm. it's still your flash farm mechanic. So this that's the most interesting part for me. Like, as a mid player, I'm actually really de excited to see how this goes and how this plays, because it a lot of things are different right now for me that yeah. I don't typically see. Like, if you see Mushi's build, he's actually opted to go for two Null Talismans, and he's skipping the bottle entirely. Because I, I assume he just doesn't need the bottle. Because yeah, because he's not going power shot. shot, right? So he's not spamming it out. So he's focused more on his right-click damage. And right now, I mean, if you look at the damage difference, he's doing 77 a hit while Viper's only doing 67. And when Mushi pops a win run, like, Viper's not doing any damage to him. So he's actually just able to... Uh, like just really put pressure on Viper sometimes or e at the very least secure easy CS. So um, it's uh, quite an even matchup so far. Take a look at some of the other lanes though. We are having some pressure up here at the top lane from Fnatic. They're going to wrap around now with Johnny. Zai, who is level three, is hitting himself inside the trees, but he's going to be spotted out eventually, I think, or, or not. The creeps die as the Iron Shell goes out and Fnatic are going to be forced back. So Zai actually managed to get a lot of experience uh, from that wave and probably the next wave as well, since Johnny's not going to be positioned to catch him out this time. Yeah, I think it was a little obvious that they were going for him because you'll notice that you want to sandwich in between having a creep wave so you can dive under the tower. And Fnatic were just pushing the lane like as fast as they could. Like they're pretty much auto attacking it down. Now they're doing it because they want to get the tower down. But previously, I think they were doing it to dive, and I think he saw that coming. Yeah. Like even Ohio's rotated in for this because he's had such a rough time at bottom. Because that's the thing about the support Naga, right? Is that you just Radiant's set up a hero like Gyro, who's incredibly strong attack. in the laning phase, just to win his lane, and then you can Radiant's rotate the Naga around to pretty much do whatever you want. She doesn't just have to sit here static mm -hmm. in the lane, but first tower of the game is going to go for Fnatic, and uh, I mean, I'm still Radiant's just really fascinated by this build from Mushi. Like, he's opted to go for three in his Shackle Shot, so he's not going to have the best fl uh, flash harm advantage, but attack. his early disables will be really sick. Three second sun off the bat of five minutes is pretty insane, but yeah, you're really relying a lot on it. It almost feels all any to me. Yeah, it really does. Ohio's going to be caught here by Puppy. There's pretty much no chance. In fact, if anything, Team Secret may be the ones in trouble. Catch again, but actually completes his TP, despite the fact that Arteezy's already gone for him. Big Nuke comes out, Arteezy drops low, but not low enough. Fnatic can finish him off, and now with a couple more flat cannon shots, they're going to be forced back here. Ohio, who doesn't have mana. Mushi's here trying to trap Arteezy in. He eats his way through the trees, making a bit of a juke around, buys the rest of his items, and will end up going down to Ohio here. Oh, Jesus, Ohio dropped pretty low, but uh, Arteezy uh, very obviously trapped due to good rotations out from Team Fnatic. And that, that's part of the advantage, right? When you put uh, a little bit of all-in pressure in your safe lane and you take that tier one tower first, that leaves your supports or maybe even your core open to rotate um, mass to the bottom lane. Mushi is going to be potentially caught here. Kuro doesn't quite yet have ensnared. Now he does. The mana gets laid out. Double stuns are going to be out. Power shot being laid in. Kuro's actually going to drop pretty low, but S4 comes in in order to clean that last hit. Catch Gimba couldn't really stop that Viper from killing out the Wind Rangers. So, in the end, two to one advantage going to Team Secret solely because of that pickoff there on Mushi before it actually seemed things were going Fnatic's way. If you think about it, the current type of mid heroes or the heroes that are played right now are incredibly mobile. And we're starting to see the prevalence of heroes like Dazzle, Keeper of the Light, things like that. Mm -hmm. And so people just don't really have a heavy focus on like supports that can gank or actually get kills off, right? It's more just play the stack game, try to get into team fights and just go for the five-man push. 
But I, that's why I like the Crystal Maiden and the Naga pickup, because there's actually no way that Mushu was going to get out of that. Like, they had Ensnare, they had uh, Crystal Nova, you've got the Frostbite as well. There's just so many different ways to deal with the mobility that Fnatic have. Yeah, I was going to say, when you brought up, like, how good Crystal Maiden is versus the um, the Queen of Pain, because you can actually blink away, the, the same kind of um, single target disable is really good against Windranger as well, who's so dependent on that win run. Yeah, it was like the old Dota 1 counter. If there was a Windranger on the other team that was going to play the offlane, then you would just pick Crystal Maiden, because you, you had to force her into a position like that. But I'm just really curious to know what, the thought process is behind oh, not getting wow. the car shot at all. Did you see that? So this early ward that was placed by Puppy earlier uh, managed to spot out the double smoke, but it looks like Kuro is still going to go down here. He pops the uh, images, is able to dodge some damage, but not quite enough. He gets some good damage into Johnny, but it's still going to be a free pickoff for Fnatic, um, despite the fact that they scouted that one out. A bit curious. Maybe they thought that uh, that smoke meant they were going to rotate around through the top part of the map um, to catch out S4 somehow, but... That seemed to me, at least, um, a, a huge mistake from Team Secret. It was probably just a missed call, because yeah. I think they thought they could that fight, attack. but the Queen main ultimate is too high, and maybe they weren't entirely sure where things were going, because at the worst, you want to secure that Arteezy lives here. So I don't think it was the worst play, but um, I think it was a little bit of a mistake, and taking a look at both supports, there is a smoke on Puppy now, and there is a level 6 on... Uh, S4, and if you notice that S4 decided to go for four in the corrosive skin, and it just hasn't paid off because yeah. the Wind Ranger A isn't really getting in a right click fight with him, and P he doesn't have a power, a level of power shot yet. You didn't need that. So you think it, it, I, I was kind of thinking about that, right? Like if you are going for a stats build with more and Wind Run on Wind Ranger, does that give more incentive for the Viper to go for like less levels in corrosive skin and more on the right click of his own, or because of the fact that, you know, Winrun is getting a little bit extra levels and in man fighting so much, maybe the defensive option is just better. I, I don't know. I, I almost kind of agree with his corrosive skin um, build. Would you have preferred to see, like, earlier levels in Nether Toxin in that case? No, because Daya's if Mushi hasn't thrown a single power shot this entire game, then you realize, like, there's no point in going for the Nether Toxin or the Poison Attack. Mm -hmm. Because the Poison Attack, it's not really going to make a difference too much whether you, or not you level it against a Wind Ranger that has two levels of the Wind Run, right? Mm -hmm. Same with The same goes for the Nether Toxin. But okay. um, the Corrosive Skin, I think, is just a mid-game build in general. Like, you yeah. grab Corrosive Skin, you get a mechanism. Your hero's like the tankiest hero in all of Dota. And if you look at Fnatic, their sustained fight is actually not that strong. Oh, catching out, catching Gimba from behind a tower. Four-man smoke is successful, but now Arteezy's been caught by at least that shackle shot plus the focus fire. Looks like Arteezy is going to be going down. He drops out the call down before he leaves, though. Mushi's going to be the target of the Viper. Unfortunately, the Snowball unable to save him. Another hero goes down, and perhaps a third is Zai deep behind the tower. Bakuro, the clutch save there of the Song of Siren in order to reset the fight and make sure it's just a clean two for two. So in the end, does Despite the fact that Fnatic were the ones surprised by that gank and the four man smoke up, it still was quite an even fight. Yeah, I actually still kind of give the advantage there to Secret. Mm -hmm. uh, just because, like, I know I'm obsessing a lot over the Wind Ranger build, and maybe I shouldn't, but if you do go for this build without Power Shot, like, I think it's really cool, but at the same time, you have to be successful early game. Like, because you don't have a flash arm mechanic, that means it's going to take her to, like, level 12 to be able to max out everything, right? right? She wants to get a second level of the Focus Fire. So that means she's naturally going to be far behind. And so it does rely on Mushi to have an early start that's successful to kind of pay off. Otherwise, you're just playing the catch-up game. But I really... Again, the, the, the ward once again oh. caught it out the four-man smoke. Yeah, and he's playing super far back. Yeah. They should be able to spot that this is coming for RTZ. He's going to run away. Uh, but to build on your point, like, we, we also kind of agreed beforehand that this is sort of the way that Fnatic operate. Like, they need Mushi to do well. So it's not only about the hero, right, but it's also the playstyle Fnatic that you, you can't afford to let Mushi get shut down because he is your big playmaker. He's the one who makes sure that Fnatic, if he's doing well, Fnatic does well. If he's doing poorly, I don't think I've ever really seen a game where Fnatic still come out on top. Yeah, but I do like the... I do like the fact that there's a heavy emphasis on putting as much pressure on Arteezy. Like, Arteezy's typically left relatively uncontested, but the fact that Fnatic are continuing to go after him um, speaks a lot about the fact that they're playing to win right now. Yeah. They're not afraid to smoke deep into the jungle. 
Uh, they're not giving Secret the type of respect that most teams show them. And I think that's overall the right play. And the way that uh, Fnatic are actually building their heroes too, I think they're both teams are pretty much gearing up for sort of mid-game fight. Because if you notice that KYXY, instead of going for something more typical like the uh, like the Yule Scepter that we've been seeing into the Aghanims or even like an early BKP, he's mm -hmm. going for the Bracer into the Robe of the Magi, which I think, I mean, that should mean that he's going to go for drums, right? <laughs> Yeah, unless oh, he top just wants a value bracer. KYXY is still going to have a blink. Oh, that... oh, he couldn't even get it off in time. That was beautiful timing from Zai halfway through the blink animation. You couldn't, uh, like, vacuum is not a very long disable, but if you can interrupt somebody's animation like that, he just extended that disable, the extra bit of half second timing there that was required for the freezing field to do the damage. Yeah, that was just so well played because it resets the animation like you have to recast mm -hmm. and so just a really good play uh by zai reading the situation but uh, still it is only the queen of pain i feel like fanatic are somewhat okay with that no they're not that was their carry like he needs yeah. farm progression faster than this because it would have been okay if catch game in ohio were successful in their gank on arteezy at the bottom lane but that unfortunately didn't work out, despite the fact that they had a ward and everything, uh, Tusk just wasn't able to get over in time. So artizi has got drums, they've got a mech as well. I think this is the time for them to just go for the map control. And if you're Fnatic, I almost feel as though you have to just get the level 6 onto Johnny, and then look for smart fights. <laughs> like, right now the pickoff potential for them isn't too high because the Tusks had such a rough start in the early game when he got zoned out for so long. Yeah. So he has to be a little bit uh, concerned about that. and. A four step's actually going to be the first item for Zai. Why do you think that is over the like the choice of should the Viper go for stats like maybe some early stats? We've seen S and Y before, maybe a fast Aghanim Scepter, and then the Darkseer goes for the Mech. Vice for what's the pros and cons between the two? I think the Darkseer going for the Mech um, is actually just naturally worse. Like. Because the Viper, you want to be able to stay naturally tanky in these fights, mm -hmm. and you don't want to have to rely on the Darkseer being nearby. Okay. I actually like the four stuff because I think it just prolongs the fight as long as possible. Um, but Fnatic are going to run into a pretty sick timing where they're about to hit level 6 on Johnny. They're going to pick up a Medallion on their Visage. And once that happens, Cap, there are options for them. Like, they can do the Roshan quite easily. They do have Dire Side for that, and their fight game potential isn't too bad either. Like, they've got... Drums completed on the Queen of Pain, but I do feel like with that timing, like, you have to pretty much go non-stop. Like, yeah. she's going to pick up a mech. Like, these are the items that you need to pretty much get into fights. And I feel like with Fnatic, the way that they're building, you pretty much have to get into fights. Yeah, you, you said very early on that you felt like this Wind Ranger build was sort of all in-ish in, in a way where you basically have to do well in the early game. Otherwise, you don't have the power shot to continue farm and you'll eventually fall behind. And you're seeing more and more elements of all-in behavior out from Fnatic. The, like a big example being the drums on the Queen of Pain. I feel that's very all-in because it's so uh, early stat focused and will play a serious detriment later on. Catching him is maybe going to be caught out here. Call down does Feel him catching is going to be going down now as he has no escape whatsoever. So a smoke that is successful for Team Secret. But just to finish up my point here, like the drums, the ring of Bacillus, like that feels like very all in early game focused and you need to get big dividends out of that stat item. And then the Wind Ranger going for the mech now uh, means that if she doesn't manage to have good fights, hold up, Puppy's going to be the target of a snowball, quickly blowing him up. There's one and it Seems like they'll run away. They don't need to try and go for second. They know Arteezy is somewhere nearby. Yeah, I don't really... Maybe all in isn't the right term, but heavily focused or heavily geared towards having... Yeah, them heavily team. early to mid-game focused. And if you lose those early game team fights, you're naturally going to fall really far behind. Yeah, I don't want people to think that we're... Or especially that I'm hitting on Fnatic or anything like that. Or their items. Like, I think this is really interesting. And I think this is the right approach because I don't think that against a team like Secret, you can just succeed the early game completely and hope that something like your late game pays off. I feel like applying the early pressure is the right idea. Yeah. But again, they have to start doing it soon. Like what they're waiting on right now is pretty much Mushi to hit this mech timing. Um, and for their supports to both get level six, like the Witch Doctor's level six now, you're not really seeing too much farm progression on the Queen of Pain. So I feel like once Mushi picked up his mech, which is after this creep wave, they should just start running at them. Arteezy pushing out the bottom lane with little fear, Fnatic. 
not able to find an opening on him for the last few minutes. Johnny, meanwhile, is doing uh, farming up here in the top lane. Uh, seems like he's got an early belt of strength to, I, I guess, finish up treads uh, before he starts going up for the items. So maybe he just feels like he needs a little bit more tankiness, but... Uh, he's going to be in some trouble here. Zion's going to try and run him down, but naturally the Ion Shell damage over time just doesn't pair well against a Witch Doctor who has a heal over time. So, uh, if Fnatic are going to get into a fight here, the bottom line, they've already actually retreated ahead of the Naga Siren sleep. Catch Gimba trying to get the TP out does get revealed. Oh, the Slung actually caught him there before the TP could complete. And Catch Gimba will be going down, but I would say Fnatic, that could have been so much worse. A quick retreat uh, managed to make sure that they didn't get completely initiated on by the Kuro ultimate. Yeah, the problem there was I think they wanted to get into a fight before they could, but Mushi didn't have the mech completed to him, and Johnny shows himself at top. So Secret know that at worst, it's a 4v5 fight. But Mushi was showing himself mid prior to that as well, so I think it was just a little bit of miscommunication by Fnatic, because they they should have ran, I think, just five seconds earlier, and they would have gotten out scot free. Um, but a good catch by Kuro, just preemptively throwing out the Song of the Siren out, and they're able to bring down not too big of a hero. Like, it doesn't slow down Fnatic's plans, I feel. Right. Yeah, they're still going to go for this tier 1 tower. Uh, maybe presuming that Team Secret have rotated out. They do have some vision of these heroes, but it seems a lot more on uh, just presumption that after one fight like that and a bottom tier 1 tower push, they naturally rotate out. Blink Dagger's now up for Ohio, so he's got some initiating power to himself. Mushi has that mech and phase boots. I'm presuming you go for the Aghanim Scepter next because you still want to build Windranger into more damage, but it also means that you've actually got a really nice stats build where you're really tanky as a Windranger when you've got both Ags and mech. Or at least, you know, tanky for a Windranger anyway. Yeah, this was the old school build that we used to see, but it's kind of fallen out of popularity because of the lack of damage that she puts out. Mm -hmm. and just the fact that Aghanim Scepter is such a great item on her, but I like it. I think that this is the correct idea. Um, I think Fnatic could execute a little bit better, but I think overall their game plan isn't bad whatsoever. Like they have so much team fight on their team and I feel like the correct play now, now that you've got pretty much all your core items, is to just march down. Because if you look at the way they build, nobody has a Midas or anything like that. There's not a whole lot of late game potential, so I feel like Fnatic are almost into a position where they should go into a fight. But I yeah. feel like this was their strategy to begin with, just looking at the item choices alone. Mm -hmm. But once again, they're backing down from that fight. Uh, I, I'm getting more and more concerned that, that we are talking about how Fnatic are wanting to be able to force a fight, at least with their item build and everything. We we get this feeling like they're focused on those 15, the, the team fights that are 15 to 25 minutes to kind of win the, the beginning of the mid game, that sort of area that can be so important in the current meta. Um, and we're not seeing them force those fights. And as time goes on, Secret are getting more and more of a net worth lead on their three cores. So you look at the Piper and the Gyrocopter, they're way far ahead of the Fnatic course. Yeah, the score is only 7 to 5, but if you take a look at the difference in net worth, it's almost 10k. Like, you, it was like a really sneaky 10k too, but yeah. Uh, if you look at S4's build alone, like I was talking about how Fnatic didn't have any Midas's or they didn't have build-up potential. Like, look at what S4 decided to buy. He decides to go for the hand of Midas because he realizes that. Like, even he... Uh, was faster about it than I was, like recognizing in the game, okay, they don't really have a whole lot of late game potential, so why not just go for the safe route? Like, I've got the mech, and now I can force Fnatic into a position where they overextend. But I think Fnatic are kind of doing things the right way. Like, as weird as it sounds, because we discussed how they had to get active sooner or later, um, I feel like if you get active and you throw a fight against a team that has a Midas and a Gyrocopter, then the potential is there for you to just straight up lose. So you have to be patient. You have to look right. for that one really smart engagement. It can't come at like the 40 minute mark, but having yeah. it done one or two minutes later probably doesn't make too big of a difference. So the uh, the idea being that yes, this is the way they built, they, they need to try and force some sort of early game team fight, but don't force the wrong fight, right? Like we haven't seen an opening where Fnatic had an advantage and they walked away. It was always Team Secret were set up in a very good position. Problem is now as time goes on, it's getting worse and worse. Now Roshan going to Team Secret and Aegis being picked up. This means a big advantage for the next five minutes and a big advantage for the next 30 seconds is Echigimba gets caught right outside the Roshan pit as well. Yeah, that's definitely their idea, is to just not take the wrong fight. But at this point, they're just not taking any fights. And so 
the net worth advantage continues to build in favor of Secret, who are just all going for the late game, I feel. Like, just... Our easy will build towards a Satanic, and a top is going to pick off. That was a big burst of damage. Puppy's going to go down as well, it seems. Uh, nice little double kill there for Ohio. And that's something really important, right? Fnatic, uh, it's really bad that they gave up Roshan and gave up that Aegis because it means that they st can't force a fight, right, for another five minutes. Or if they do, um, it's a very risky one to fight into an Aegis. But if the Aegis is already there, then the plan is you got to get pickoffs like that. And a double kill is exactly what Fnatic needed. They put some pressure on that tier 2 tower as well and start continuing the item progression of the Queen of Pain. That Aghanim Scepter is going to be a little bit late than normal, but that is, of course, because she went for the drums build first. Yeah, and I think Fnatic are completely adapting to the game right now because if you notice that Mushi... He's got a Mithril Hammer, um, so he can go one of two ways, the Maelstrom or the Desso. I think the Maelstrom is more likely, just because of the type of damage that you want to output. And yeah, it is, because he's just going for farm now. Like, he hasn't participated in any fights. Like, he's been 1-2-0 since minute 12, I think, since they started tracking it. And so for the last 10 minutes, all he's done is farm. And I think that's the correct idea here. They're not trying to overforce anything. And if you take a look at the uh, Tusk build too on Ohio, he's opted to go for the Shadow Blade. So I think this is more of a, let's look for pickoffs now. The moment of time has passed where we can just put this heavy amount of pressure in the mid game, right. especially with the Aegis gone, like you said. And so I think this is the correct response. Like go for some pickoff potential and look for things of that nature rather than just all in or anything like that. Yeah, and that's why they gave up the tier two tower here in this middle lane. They don't want to try and go into a team fight, even if it is around their own tier, own tier two tower, simply because that Aegis is still up. So Ohio's quick to try and push out that bottom lane, but he's going to be forced into a rotation back. Team Secret, knowing that Fnatic really don't want to take team fight right now, are going to take it to Fnatic's front door. They already go uphill, focusing now on that tier three tower. Team Secret do get a very nice shackle shot, as well as an ice shard that kind of keeps them in a bad position. But again, these two very tanky heroes are not going to be taken lightly. RTZ, a little bit of damage coming out. Fnatic are just kind of poking and prodding, hoping to be able to bring RTZ low enough that they can kill him uh, while he still has that Aegis, but not commit to a team fight. Yeah, I think that they just back off, or maybe even go for a fake back, because they have a smoke. Like, that power shot uh, just misses, but Puppy actually just shows that he wants to completely back. They're not really getting what they want out of this, because Fnatic can just infinitely hold by spamming out spells. Uh, and so it's going to be way too difficult for them to high ground breach at this moment. And really, there's no reason for them to risk it at all. Like, I think Aegis in general is a, an item that makes teams a little bit too overconfident. But if that gyro is cut out of position, like, even with the Aegis, they could just blow him up, right? Mm -hmm. Like, a good death ward positioning makes him uh, play root defensively. And if he gets shackled, like, anything can happen. Mm -hmm. So I think the better play there is just to reset and look for a pickoff. And that's exactly... What's going to happen is Ohio at top. Yeah, he's going to be going down quite easily. The Walrus Punch leading things off. So the three-man smoke gang finds Ohio. Yet another kill. Talking about Fnatic and how they're falling a little bit behind in net worth. But Ohio is the one leading the charge here in net worth, at least for his team. Sitting at 9k. Uh, still 12k on the Viper. 13 on the Gyrocopter. But... Of course, one good, really good team fight for Fnatic, and they can actually even out this advantage, or at least bring it pretty close. Yeah, and something to say for Fnatic's lineup at the same time is that Crystal Maiden starts to fall off a little bit in terms of her disables too. Like, if you notice, she only has a single level of Frostbite. It's only a 1.5 second disable, uh, and they have ways to deal with the net because you can blink dodge the animation, like, there are ways to deal with it, and so Fnatic actually sure. have really mobile heroes against a lineup that doesn't really have the best catch potential. So I think they're going to be pretty pleased with this, and they might even go for the attempt on uh, Artesia top. Like, Ohio's in position right now. They might just want to, like, force the BKB and go back. Mm -hmm. And it looks like they are trying to pincer him, and there's no ward vision. Like, they know he's completely alone. Like, Ohio, once he spots this midway line, is going to know this isn't a smoke or anything like that at the same time. So maybe this is the attempt at top. The only potential bailout would be S4 as the Viper sitting farther down. RTZ is going to be the target here as uh, he already takes some damage from KYXY. I think they're hoping to be able to burn that BKB already. Uh, KYXY S4 is now coming over as well. Zod, they're going to try and blow off RTZ, but there goes the mech. It actually keeps him alive enough time to be able to get oh. down the call down. And he's not even going to go down. He's getting healed enough. He lives with just 20 HP. The Maledict is there. The BKB runs out in the last half second, and the Maledict will kill him 
him in the end. So they actually do manage to pick him off because his Aegis expired there as the fight Dyer's transgressed. But it was still a three loss there for Team Fnatic. Not really worth the one kill on RTZ. Yeah, they were trying to time that Aegis out, and with this ward, they didn't actually see them run through, but everyone was in position, and this might even mean that Mushi's dead. He doesn't have any defensive items. If he just gets ensnared with S4 in position, this should mean a death. He already recognizes that. He's just going to go for the tower. Oh, and he might actually get out. Oh, no, no, the vacuum is there. Mushi now turns for the tower. He gets it in the end, so he gives up his life. That dying breath does get up that last shot. Meanwhile, Puppy goes for the tower of his own in the top lane. Does manage to snag it before Ketchik Imba could hit the deny. Yeah, but good. I really like that Bandanic decided to go for that. Um, kill on RTZ. Just, there was just such a fast rotation by Secret. There was almost no chance for them to be able to respond. Uh, but I feel like Secret, they're still in firm control of this game. The net worth advantage alone tells the story, right? Like, yes. I've been trying to talk about a lot of what Fnatic is doing, but that's mainly because S or Secret's plan, game plan is clear, and they are leading with it. And so I feel like it's more interesting, I guess, to talk about what Fnatic yeah, are doing to try to get back into the game. It's more interesting to talk about the struggle because you do see Team Secret build more and more of an advantage. A Fnatic will find a serious pickoff here on S4, but he's taking his all hell. Io actually has to pop the Shadow Blade and start packing himself up for fear of trading one for one. But in the end, the three-man gank is successful. Nobody lost on the side of Fnatic. And uh, a very important kill. In fact, that one kill was worth 728 gold for the Witch Star. Actually, almost have Aghanim oh, Scepter. That is a gigantic change in in power potential for Team Fnatic in these team fights. Yeah, I know the net worth reads to K, but if anybody you've been playing Dota for long enough, you know that that Witch Doctor Ultimate can completely change your fortunes. We talked about it uh, in the early game last time, right? Or early on in this game, and so I think that it can completely change the fight. You've got an Aghanim's on your Queen of Pain, and Ohio is just doing absolute work with the Shadow Blade because Puppy. He's just avoiding Puppy because he realizes that Puppy will most likely have sentries in areas that he's going to traverse through. And so if you notice, like anytime Puppy shows himself in mid, then he just goes top and vice versa. Like he just tries to annoy the hell out of our, uh, out of secret. We've got Shiva's coming in soon for Zai's Darkseer Gyrocopter about to pick up the butterfly. So we're getting to the point in time where now Team Secret's farm is getting to a point where they're all giving that getting that first really big late game item. Um, butterfly for Gyro. Shiva's is huge for, for Darkseer, I would say. I mean, that that increase in HP, like just the, the general increase in armor and the attack speed slow and everything else, I, I think Zai's just going to be able to survive through some of these nukes. And kind of same goes with a lot of Team Secret. They have just enough sustain that then it comes down to the right-click damage. And that's just already not that fearsome from Team Fnatic. It's only really on the Wind Ranger. And then that's going to be slowed down quite heavily by things like the Shivas. Yeah, and Ohio at this bottom lane again, potentially just trying to harass out. I think they're just trying to force rotation towards him. But I think Secret are just going to ignore this and decide to go for this bottom lane, this tier 2, and there's actually no vision from Fnatic, and they're rotating down this Queen of Pain, and KYXY is going to get spotted out by Puppy, and Oh, Ohio, he did get spotted out now. He's going to try and make a snowball play, but it looks like he is stuck 100%, so Fnatic will lose their uh, Tosku was getting himself quite a good amount of net worth, but will falter a bit more now. Team Secret, well set up, I think, to be able to take that tier 2 tower in the bottom lane. Yeah, and I think by Fnatic, you should just scramble, start to pressure out this top lane because you know what uh, Secret's game plan is going to be. The reason they're saving this two tower for last and why they're marching down right now is I think you just go for this tower and then go for the Roshan immediately after, and then you've got high ground potential for the bottom lane at the same time. Right. And you've got pretty much everything you want, but at the same time, Fnatic is still building correctly. Like, if you notice that Mushi's response, even before RTZ uh, completes anything, is to go for the MKB. Like, he's actually just completely deviating from the norm, and I think this is the correct way. Like, he's adapting to the game rather than just simply saying, I'm going to go all in to get uh, the Aghanim Scepter, right? Yeah. Like, he realizes his damage output really relies on being able to get an MKB against a team that has... 
both a solar crest and the butterfly. Yeah, otherwise, it would just be a very simple setup where Team Secret would five man into Team Fanatic's base and put both a gyrocopter with an Aegis and a Viper, uh, you know, uphill beating on the tier three tower. And you have to deal with them, otherwise, they're going to take out your building. So you have to be able to get some sort of damage to deal with that, um, that evasion. And even that, even just dealing with the evasion, is not going to be enough because the gyrocopter and the Viper are still significantly tanky um, without that. So um, I think Mushi's has the right idea, but Fnatic are going to need a little bit more damage than just that. And that, of course, is where the Aghanims of the Witch Doctor is going to come in. He does have his level 2 ultimate, and that is quite significant. It looks like Ohio, is he going BKB? Um, or is he going like a Desolator just to try and increase the single target focus of, say, the Wind Ranger? Like, he goes in, punches the Gyrocopter, and that allows Mushi to get a lot of focus fire damage. I feel like you still need to go for the BKB against Secret's lineup. Like, mm -hmm. there's just too much that I can deal with. But Fnatic are going for the smoke round. They know that the entire team is there. This might actually be their best shot at winning a fight, but they have to do it quickly because Secret are beating on these Tier 3s, and this might not even be an advantage because they'll have their own high ground. Oh, they're going to go first for Curl. Immediately taking him out. There is going to be no song. A siren to be able to save them, but already the response is there from Sai. Two man vacuum while on top. Oh, oh, oh no, he's gonna go dead. The freezing field is being laid out. Death Ward, though, is focused on S4, but he's just too tanky. He doesn't care. He soaks up all the damage. And now here comes the buyback. Mushi is the first one. Tusk as well lays out his. They need more pickoffs. They need to be able to catch Team Secret, who are on the retreat now, but it doesn't look like they're gonna find anything. So, really, the only Thing that Team Fnatic truly recover, unless RTZ gets caught here. Ohio kind of playing a small game with him, but yeah, he can't commit. Um, they managed to take away the gem. Because they managed to pick off Kuro first, take him out, make sure there was no Song of Siren set up, and then they immediately have the buybacks, they recover the gem, which I think is significant enough. Not Maybe not worth the, the buybacks out from Team Fnatic, but it does give you some recovery and it gives you some signs of life. Yeah, the problem is that if you lose that many buybacks, you pretty much have to go for some sort of objective just so you don't fall too far behind. Mm -hmm. And this might actually be a decent scenario for them where they go for the Roshan, yeah. but they have to get this. You can't really lose this fight or get caught out because both buybacks are on CD. Fnatic is getting quite low. Mushi's going to pop the win run and get out of here, but it doesn't really look like Secret can continue to chase. Ice Shards blocking about S4. Well, no, he gets back to his team. The Mac and Team Fnatic are not going to try and go for the pickoff. It would just... Um, put them in a bad position, committing a bit too heavily. So I like what they did there. I, I actually felt like, yeah, recovering the gem was not enough, but recovering the gem and then actually getting Roshan and, and picking up just and not losing anybody after that, I think almost makes the buybacks worth it. I, I think Fnatic are going to be very happy with the one that played, with the way that played out. Yeah, I don't think you're happy with using buybacks. Mm -hmm. Because like if you lose this fight, you're gonna lose so much. But yeah. it, it was like the they made the best out of a bad situation. But secret, I mean, they're just so dominant in their farm right oh, now. Nice ice shards, RTZ stuck in a bad position. But there goes that song of siren, and RTZ will be able to get away. He brought down to 800 HP in such a short period of time. They're still gonna have the ultimate out from YX. Why RTZ drops lower? But now here comes a vacuum call down. They're gonna be able to catch one and a second as the Aegis falls. Johnny, meanwhile, throws out that Death Ward, doing a good amount of damage, but it's still not enough to finish off any one hero. As for the front lines, Mushi is going to be forced to try and take him out. Great shackle shot that locks down S4. A bit longer, we'll be able to get that kill, but between the ensnare and the damage of RTZ, the Wind Ranger falls once again, and Team Secret are now left with the predicament of whether or not they want to clean that melee racks for their own. Yeah, and I think the Queen of Pain um, is also still in the buyback hold penalty. She's not going to have uh, buyback for another seven minutes, so her dying here would effectively end the game for Fnatic. So they're just trying to scramble, stay alive, whatever they can, but Arteezy, with the help of the urn, is already at full HP. And that did look like a deceptively good fight for Fnatic because Arteezy dropped so low, S4 was already quite low, and you had the Aegis, but they're unable to capitalize. Secret just outlasts them because of the amount of farm that they have. Yep, Zai is always able to get great counter initiations, and RTZ, even if you drop to like 200 HP, it doesn't matter. Pops a flat cannon, is able to get all those shots off, and because of his significant amount of damage that he's rocking right now, uh, it just is so much physical damage that Fnatic can't really recover from there. So, two sets of Rex is the cost for Fnatic losing that team fight in the middle lane, and they continue to far, fall farther and farther behind. Team Fnatic almost seems to need to do something drastic now to hope to recover the game. Yeah, I think part of the issue, if you want to go back to the early game, is 
the way that they picked both of their supports, like you've got a Witch Doctor and a Visage, but both are heroes that really heavily rely on having that Aghanim Scepter at a reasonable time. Johnny, you can argue, got his at an okay time, but Ketrick Imba is actually a little bit too far behind. Like yeah. Getting a 45-minute um, Visage Aghanim Scepter at this point probably doesn't matter too much just because Arteezy's got a butterfly. Like Black Cannon takes him out so quickly. Mm -hmm. And that's the issue is that you have two supports that both need farm, but you can't really evenly distribute it. But you do need all three stuns to be able to do anything. And I feel like their momentum is just kind of fizzling out more than anything. Now we've got more luxury items coming in. Boots of Travel being picked up by Zyne's Darkseer. And then on top of that, even the support has something to go on here. Ohio is maybe going to be caught out here. The vacuum pulls him back into the call down. They had the vision to be able to catch him out. So Darteezy now jumps into a dominating streak. They lose Ohio. And uh, that's right. The other item I wanted to talk about was the KB from Puppy, who now has a level 3 freezing field, especially with the way that uh, that ability was buffed up. This is going to be a significant increase in damage for Team Secret, especially since Fnatic do not have any real good ways to stop Puppy from using that freezing field. Pretty much the only way is to Tusk a Walrus Punch. Yeah, now that the Tusk is dead, they're going to feel pretty comfortable about this. And Puppy's actually just going to snake around and try to get in a better position, but there are two Sentry Wards up there, so he has to be careful. And Fnatic are kind of in a rough situation where they don't have buybacks where they really desperately need them because this is the game losing fight or winning fight potentially for them. Mushi comes in from the side, hoping to be able to shackle both RTZ and S4 together. Meanwhile, Johnny actually gets caught. He was hiding in a cope of trees, but uh, Kuro managed to actually find him. And they take out Johnny, who's going to be a primary source of damage, or at least was supposed to be, for Team Fnatic. But now he's down for 45 seconds. Kuro pops the Song of Siren, leads with the ultimate, and is now just giving his time to complete Mega Creeps. That is an 8-second hold. And now Naga Siren, while she is very far forward and will be sacrificed, it does come at the cost of Mega Creeps and... Uh, Really bad fight for Team Fnatic as they still get back enough wall call down and the combination is just too much to handle. Team Fnatic, even underneath their fountain, don't stand a chance and Team Secret will take game number one. Yeah, and this was just, it wasn't the flashiest victory, but it was just efficient by Secret. Like Fnatic, they had a pretty good idea of what they wanted to do. You could see that there was a game plan with the way that they built items and uh, the way that they built their heroes, but it just didn't pan out for them because they lost early control so quickly and they just weren't able to get any towers down. And I, I actually feel like Secret, there were a few slip-ups, but it didn't even end up mattering because